The South African Institute for Drug-Free Sports CEO Khalid Galant is in studio with us this morning to discuss findings from a World Anti-Doping Agency's report from 2014, which took 1,853 samples from South African athletes. Khalid, thank you very much for coming in this morning. It's a very topical issue, of course, with the Rio Olympics just around the corner. But this report that came out a couple of weeks ago um, stated 2014. Just first of all, explain to us why there's, I guess, this sort of backlog um, and with the current sort of samples, um, when are those sort of due? Yeah, uh, the, the tricky part with the drug testing is when athletes test positive, uh, the results are actually only confirmed or um, a few months later because we have to go through a case, a hearing, um, and all, you know, those stuff. So uh, it takes a few months for actual uh, statistics or data to be confirmed. And in the WADA report, they talk about so many tests um, um, that we did, mm -hmm. how many positives there were. And then there's another little stat um, that says in, in South Africa's case, there were seven positive cases that uh, didn't go to a hearing or that mm -hmm. the athlete didn't have to answer for. And those are like medical anomalies. So it takes some time for those stats to be confirmed uh, a couple of months so that it can be really true stats so that we can compare countries uh, to countries or sports to sports so that the, the data is valid. Okay. Now I've got some questions. Obviously there's a lot of sort of anti-doping jargon in here. Um, so th these 1,834 samples that were taken um, revealed that uh, 55 um, gave rise to adverse analytical findings um, and 14 not pursued due to therapeutic use exemptions. Seven had no case to answer. What does all of that mean? <laughs> so uh, 55 uh, adverse analytical findings, that is when the lab tests positive, mm -hmm. um, identifies a sample that tests positive. Uh, so let's say, um, and one of that would be someone with a high testosterone level. So that doesn't mean that the person is taking testosterone. They may have a, a normal genetic condition mm -hmm. that they produce high testosterone. So that's not cheating, it's not doping. Um, so we do an investigation, obviously, to determine that. Uh, in some cases, a few years ago in South Africa, one case where an athlete had a high testosterone level, it was the early signs of prostate cancer. Mm. And our investigation revealed uh, that and told the athlete, you need to go to an oncologist and confirm mm. um, what uh, we're doing. So those are some of the stats where there's no case to answer. And then you have athletes that compete, especially athletic uh, athletes, where they have to take uh, bronchodilators, which are bit, uh, contains uh, beta 2 agonist, which is a, a medicine um, that is banned, um, mm. that you're not allowed to take uh, generally. Uh, but you can get an exemption because of a medical condition. And there are different uh, steps that you have to take mm. and a threshold that you have to meet uh, for that to be approved, which is called a therapeutic use exemption. Okay. And then when you said there seven had no case to answer, what... Uh, again, with, with those cases, it would be people that, uh, again, have high testosterone levels um, and it's just uh, genetically produced, so um, uh, it's not doping, it's not cheating, and they can continue to compete as such. They don't have to explain anything okay. <laughs> or apply for an exemption. Okay, so uh, 34 were anti-doping rule violations, and uh, the biggest offenders being um, rugby, athletics, cycling, and powerlifting. So the trend does seem to be sports that require sort of strength, bulk, endurance. Are these uh, worldwide trends? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, uh, it is a worldwide trend and it's consistent with um, the global uh, mm -hmm. statistics, but one also has to be in mind where <coughs> we place our resources, our testing resources. Mm -hmm. We test based on risk and what we have a formula which we refer to as a doping risk uh, formula. So based on that formula and the variables that we use in that formula, sports like rugby, uh, athletics and uh, cycling will get tested more than sports like uh, cricket that has a lower doping risk profile. Mm. Um, and you know, statistically, the more we test, you, know, um, you tend to have more positive um, tests uh, where we uh, allocate more resources to that. Mm.